Hello, my art-loving friends. I am Deborah Kay, and I welcome you to Paint with a Passion. Today, we are going to paint this gorgeous infinity butterfly. It's super easy and super fun. Here is my recipe. You can pause here to gather what you need, or just refer to the list in the description area below this video. So get all your goodies together and let's make the magic happen as we paint with a passion. Let's run through what you're gonna need really quick. The varnish for your final coat, some filler glue to fill in divots. You'll need a round brush for the body sparklies. You'll need a fine lining brush to do all of your outlining. You'll need a couple of small sponges uh, to blend the two colors of the wings that you're going to use. You'll need a stencil guide. And of course, you'll need a rock or whatever canvas it is you decide to paint on. And that's it. Let's get to painting. I am painting on a three and a half inch river rock stone, but you can use anything you want as your canvas. It can be bigger or smaller, round or square, wood, stone, canvas, whatever you like. I have a large pit that I want to fill in and I'm using some craft glue and it dries clear. This is going to help the butterfly design to look smoother when it's all finished. You can use a blow dryer if you want to speed up the process or you could do what I do, play with your kitty cat for a little while. I recommend you use a very small amount and just push it into the divots and then wait to paint over it until it is at least dry to the touch. Time to draw our butterfly. I line up my stencils so the edges on the left and right are the same distance from the center and do the same for the top and bottom. Then I mark my center spot and trace the four center lines top, bottom, left and right. These lines are going to be used as a guide to make your butterfly wings balanced on each side. And also it'll help you uh, draw in the infinity body. So joining those lines together. And now I first draw the infinity body. I think of a number eight. Sometimes it's not perfect. Sometimes it's a very elongated eight and sometimes it's a rounder infinity shape. Now the top right wing. It's kind of like a sloppy heart from the center of the infinity body up and around the right and back into the center of the body. And then a bottom wing. I like long wings and it's kind of like an upside down sloppy M. And I use the markers as a guide to make both sides, sides similar in shape. And remember, this is impressionistic art, people. It doesn't need to be perfect. Whatever you do, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous when we're done. All right, so we have our butterfly drawn, and now we're going to outline it. This is the first of a few outlines that we're going to do. And this outline is only to set our boundaries. So using your fine lining brush, outline the butterfly shape. I start with the wings and then I fill in the body. I am using black because this is going to be the color of my wing veins and also the base for the infinity body. Black really makes everything pop. You can use any color you like, but I do recommend you look at the finished butterfly to see what I mean. Notice I'm painting out of my uh, paint bottle cap. Some say this is a no-no, and I do agree to a point. In this case, I'm going to use a very small amount of paint, and the cap is only going to be off the bottle for a short time. Also, I'm not double dipping any other color. I feel like I waste more paint using the palette sometimes, so I just dab right out of the lid. Now, if we were at the appetizer table, and you were trying to double dip your chip in my dip, I'd totally call you out on it. Flipping the chip doesn't count, so, you know, get your chip out of my dip, mister. Did I just say that? All right, so we're going to finish up filling in the infinity butterfly body, and then we're going to move on and do some blending. Here's a cool tip. So you can get these really cute gift bags. They're mesh see-through. 
You can get them large or small. You can get them for Christmas or for any other occasion. And you can put painted rocks or, or larger uh, ornaments, things like that in them. This is a picture of a gift that I gave to my mom for Mother's Day last year. All right, my lovely art friends, it's time to add some color to our wings. I am going to use primary blue and citron green. You can pick whatever colors you like. This is your butterfly and you get to make all the choices. I do recommend trying out color combinations and practice your blending techniques on an old piece of cardboard or an old piece of wood or something first. I'm going to add a few coats of each color. Uh, the first coat I'm adding is with a brush. And since I didn't use a primer and the rock is dark, it does take a bit more paint to completely cover it. So try to stay within the outer lines. And if you accidentally paint outside of the lines, you can easily wash it off with a wet cotton swab or wet um, a small part of your paint towel. Just don't use the paint out of your dirty paint water cup. Um, paint each color vertically about halfway through the wing, um, on the top wing and the bottom wing. And don't worry if you cover up the line between the wings. This outline is only a guide at this point. And like I said, we're going to do a couple sets of outlining. I do like to sponge over the paint that I've applied with a paintbrush to get rid of any stroke marks. I want it to be uh, flush. I'm going to apply the second coat of paint using um, small paint sponges and always use only one color with one side of each sponge and then keep one whole sponge for blending. So if you use the sponge for one color and double dip it into the second color, you will just end up with a mixed color and no color definition. And we already know how I feel about double dipping. So yeah, no double dipping, mister. Also, try not to use too much paint when you're using the sponge. Um, dip your sponge into the paint and then blot it off once or twice. Add more as you need it. And then when you begin to blend, go back and forth until you are happy with the blending and the wing looks just the way you want it. If it becomes a mushed mess, let the paint dry and start over. I recommend you paint the base coats and then use a light amount of paint on your sponge to blend over the top of the two colors where they meet up. Little tiny back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you get it just perfect. And when you're all done, you should basically have three colors, the original two colors and then a transition color. So let's talk a little bit about paint sponges. Uh, the ones I'm using here, this is my favorite. There are all kinds. Um, I recommend you try out several different types till you find the sponges that work best for you. I use big ones and small ones depending on what I'm working on. I find that the sponges that are more dense tend to just sort of mush the paint around versus uh, the more airy sponges. It's all about personal preference and finding the tools that work right for you. You can also use a blending brush which is uh, usually just a brush that's been used, abused, and dabbed repeatedly until it almost has a flat surface at the bottom. And one of these days I will show you how I made my own blending brush. I tend to use the blending brush when I need to get into really tiny places and none of my sponges are small enough to fit down into the little tiny details that I need them to reach into. Now I did a little bit more blending after I recorded this clip. Um, I let my paint dry a little bit and then went back in and I extended the darker blue out just a little bit further. 
um, and gave a little bit more transition. Now that you've got your wings blended perfectly just the way you want them, it's time to draw on our design. I always recommend using a white chalk pencil because it's the easiest to erase. I'm going to draw a series of shapes starting on the right side and then kind of go back and forth between the right side and the left side. You might find it easier to draw one shape on the right side and then draw it like immediately on the other side. Or you might want to complete one whole side and then do the other side. Whatever works for you is what is best. Just keep in mind that the areas inside the shapes that you draw, those are going to stay and everything else is going to be filled in with your base color. For me, that's going to be black. Make sure that some of your shapes cover the color transition area because that is going to make it look super cool. It's time to add the definition to our butterfly. Using my fine lining brush, I am going to outline each of the shapes that I have penciled in. The fine lining brush I'm using is custom made and I have two that I use. This one is curved and the other one that I do use is straight. You can watch my video to learn how to create your own fine line brushes and I'll put the link uh, below the video. I find that the curved brush works much better for outlining curves and circles and the straight one, well, you know, it works great on straight lines, especially things like block lettering. If you make a mistake while you're doing this, make sure you have cotton swabs at the ready so you can erase your mistake right away. And don't dip it into dirty paintbrush water. You'll want to have some fresh water on hand. Once you've outlined all of the shapes, outline the wings. And then I'm going to use the same brush to fill in all the space between the wing outline and the shapes that I've outlined. And the reason I'm using the same brush to fill in those spaces is because some of the areas are pretty tight. Remember, this is impressionistic art, people, so nothing is perfect. And I promise you, this will be so beautiful when you have finished. That's the beauty of art. One of a kind and everything is your choice. You can fill in with whatever design you like, use any colors you like, and just make it an extension of your own beautifulness. Is that a word? Beautifulness? Well, I like it and I'm sticking with it. Remember to make sure that your paint is always fluid. And if it's dried out at all, you'll want to pour some fresh paint into your palette. I recommend occasionally cleaning off your brush too. Uh, just make sure you dry it off really well before you begin again. Otherwise, some of the water can get stuck up in the bristles next to the handle and it makes your paint really runny. Take your time, don't rush. And as you fill in the black, you can see how it really starts coming together. Wow, look how cool this looks. So yeah, this is me pretending to outline the butterfly wings and the body in gold. I thought I was recording and realized I didn't press the record button. No! What can I say? I'm learning to make videos just like you're learning to paint. It's a journey that we're on together. I am doing some touch-up though, so that counts, right? I'm using this super cool paint to fill in the body. It is very sparkly, but not like most uh, glitter paints. Uh, the video and the photos just do not do it justice. It's like magic in a bottle, and I have to say it is my most favorite paint. It goes on milky and thick, and I always use it over a black base. It really fills in the color solid and it's almost jewel-like. It can also be used with a fan brush over your paintings to give just a hint of magic sparkle without being overbearing. Also, I'm going to add the antennas and let them dry. And then I'm going to highlight them with ever so slight the amount of gold on the very tip of the brush with very little pressure. Let's get rid of any remaining chalk lines. I always recommend the white block erasers that won't leave any rubber skid marks behind. Did I just say skid marks? I did. Now we add that gold highlight to the antennas. And you want to make sure that there's a little bit of black showing behind uh, the gold stripes that you put on. Um, also, when you are erasing, I wanted to mention that you should brush the crumbs off in the opposite direction of any paint that might still be a little wet. 
Take a look at your outline and make any adjustments. I need to do um, some thickening of the gold lines and spaces, and then I also need to thin out some of those gold lines, and I use some black paint to do that. Also, I'm evening out the outermost black outline of the butterfly, so it is an even uh, thickness all the way around the body and the wings. I'm going to let this dry for about 12 hours, and hopefully it won't be raining tomorrow so I can apply the clear coat outside. This butterfly is absolutely beautiful. Once you outline it and bring out the details with the black fill-in, I mean stunning. And once your body dries and the sparkles become jewel-like, it is just magical. Well, yay, it's not raining today. Before you begin, if you're using an exterior varnish coating, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area and you do not have any pets nearby. Also, make sure that you wear the proper protection to apply the varnish and make sure you protect your patio against overspray. And just like that with the varnish, these butterflies are absolutely brilliant. Notice the butterfly on the right has a different design. So using black paint, you can create any kind of a pattern that you want for your butterfly using the same blending technique on the wings. Look at these beautiful butterflies. Wow, absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for joining me today to Paint with a Passion. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to painting again together real soon. Let me know what you think, and also let me know what you would like to see in future tutorials. Please remember to subscribe and hit that notification button so you know as soon as I have a new video out. I wish you peace, love, and happiness now and always. Have a great day, my lovely painting friends.